غضب من الله ولهم عذاب عظيم ذلك بأنه استحب الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة وأن الله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين أولئك الذين طبع الله على قلوبهم وسمعهم وأبصارهم وأولئك هم الغافلون لا جرم أنهم في الآخرة هم الخاسرون ثم أولئك الذين طبع الله على قلوبهم وسمعهم وأبصارهم وأولئك هم الغافلون لا جرم أنهم في الآخرة هم الخاسرون ثم إن ربك للعن لا جرم أنهم في الآخرة هم الخاسرون ثم إن ربك للذين هاجروا من بعد ذلك بأنهم استحبوا الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة وأن الله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين أولئك الذين طبع الله على قلوبهم وسمعهم وأبصارهم وأولئك هم الغافلون لا جرم أنهم في الآخرة هم الخاسرون بالإيمان ولكن ولكن من شرح بالكفر صدرا فعليهم غضب من الله فعليهم غضب من الله ولهم عذاب عظيم ذلك بأنه استحب الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة وأن الله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين أولئك الذين طبع الله على قلوبهم وسمعهم وأبصارهم وأولئك هم الغافلون لا إيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعل من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحمد الله فلا يضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحمدنا شريكا وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله ربنا خلفه ويسر لي أمره وحل الأخوة من اللسان ويغفر الخير إن دينك أمنا the most compassionate the most merciful all praises worship total submission and obedience belongs to Allah. The Lord, the sustainer, the wonderful originator, the wonderful artist, and the controller of the universe. May the peace and the blessing of Allah be upon our Lord and Prophet. The universal messenger sent by the Almighty Allah, <coughs> the leader of all the prophets sent by Allah, the person of Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> May also the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon all the prophets sent by Allah from Adam alayhi salam to Jesus Christ before the coming of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Brothers in Islam, I greet you with the best greeting of Islam, which is the greeting of the angels of Allah, the greeting of the prophets of Allah, the greetings of the believers in paradise, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of the management of this respected mosque called Dawood Mosque in Ujum area, I am highly elated and happy 
to have been given this precious opportunity in the presence of my Muslim brothers in this holy month, blessed month of Ramadan, in which all the Muslims all over the world are observing their fasting. I am very much happy to be given this great opportunity in order to speak to my Muslim brothers about the beauty of our great religion, our universal religion, the religion of salvation, the religion of eternal life, the religion of all the prophets of Allah, the first and final religion from Allah, that is the religion of Islam. And we thank the Almighty Allah for making us to become Muslims. Islam is not a man-made religion. Even Prophet Muhammad was not and he was never the founder of Islam. Islam existed before the advent of Prophet Muhammad because all the prophets of God that came before the advent of Prophet Muhammad were Muslims. This indicates that among the prophets of Allah, Prophet Muhammad was not the first Muslim. Many, because there were Muslims before him. Adam was a Muslim. Enoch was a Muslim. Noah was a Muslim. Abraham was a Muslim. Ishmael was a Muslim. Isaac was a Muslim. Jacob was a Muslim. Elijah was a Muslim. Elisha was a Muslim. Solomon was a Muslim. Uh, uh, Jesus was a Muslim. Mary, the mother of Jesus, alayhi salam, was also a Muslim. All the prophets of Allah, all of them were Muslims. They knew not any other religion other than the religion of Islam. Because Islam is the divine religion of the Almighty Allah. Islam is not only the religion of the prophets of Allah, but even the religion of the angels of the Almighty Allah. All the angels of Allah are Muslims. And Allah says in the Holy Quran, in the deen, in the life of Islam, the only true religion, the only true faith, the only true guidance in the sight of the Almighty Allah is not other than the religion of Islam. Islam is the key that can be used to open the gate of paradise. Islam is the ticket that can be used to enter paradise, the kingdom of the Almighty Allah. And that is what the Almighty Allah says in the Holy Quran chapter 3 verse 85. Islam Whosoever seek for any religion other than the religion of Islam, that religion will never be accepted from him. And on the day of judgment, such a person that rejected the religion of Islam and follows Muhammad religion, concoctions, fabrication, lies, the fitment of his own imagination, such a person that rejected the religion of Islam will be among the people that lose salvation. He will be among the people that wasted their time living in this world without achieving anything spiritual that will take them to the kingdom of the Almighty Allah. And in the Holy Quran chapter 5, verse 3, and after the Almighty Allah sent the Holy Prophet Muhammad and revealed what he wanted to reveal to him, Allah says, akamal to lakum dinakum. That today I have perfected your religion for you and have completed my favor upon you and I have chosen Islam to be your religion and your way of life. This indicates that Islam has been authenticated, it has been chosen, it has been ordained divinely by the Almighty Allah to be the religion of all mankind. The religion of Islam is the perfection of the teachings of all the prophets that came from the Almighty Allah, from Adam alayhi salam, 
to Jesus alayhi salam, the son of Mary. The religion of Islam is the embodiment of the teaching of all the prophets. That is why when you open the glorious Quran, you will see the teaching of Adam, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Elijah, Elisha, Zachariah, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Job, Jonah, David, Solomon, Jesus, and other prophets that came before him. You will see their account, you will see their history in the glorious Quran. All the prophets of Allah and that the Muslims are commanded by the Almighty God to believe in all the prophets of the Almighty Allah. As they are all the same and they came with the same teaching from the Almighty Allah. That is Islam. In the Holy Quran chapter 3 verse 85. And the Holy Quran chapter 2 verse 136. They are all saying the same thing. Allah says, Ulu Aman Nabella, say that we believe in Allah. Wama on Zele Elena, and that which has been revealed unto us. Wama on Zele Ela Ibrahim, and that which has been revealed unto Abraham. Wa Ismail, and Ishmael, Wa Isaac, and Isaac, Wa Yaqub, and Jacob, Wa Azbad, and the other offspring of the children of Israel. Wama Uti and Musa wa Isa, and the revelation of God Almighty to Moses, and the revelation of the Almighty God to Jesus. The son of Mary. We do not make any distinction or segregation or create a kind of dichotomy or saying that we believe in some prophet and rejected others. We don't do that in Islam. And unto Allah that we submit ourselves in Islam. Meaning, it is only Islam that teaches the belief in all the prophets that came from the Almighty Allah. It is only Islam that have the purest belief and say in what we call what monotheism that is the unity the existence and the unity of allah believing in allah and his special attribute without ascribing or associating any partnership to the almighty allah so islam is the perfection of the teaching of all the prophets that came from the almighty allah it is the final you know message from the almighty allah that is why allah says after prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam no any other prophet will come with what with a new revelation that contravenes or contradict the teachings of the glorious quran and that is what allah meant by saying muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not the father of any one of your men Walakin Rasulullah ben Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger from the Almighty Allah wa khatam al and the last of all the prophets that came from Allah. Why did Allah make Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the last of the prophets of all? Because the Almighty Allah intended to make the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be a universal message to every nation. That portion was left for him. All other prophets of God were sent to their own various nations. For example, Jesus, alayhi salam. Eh? Jesus, alayhi salam. Jesus, alayhi salam. Jesus, alayhi salam, was sent only to the Jews. This is what the Quran says, and this is what the Bible says. Allah says in the Quran, Warasulan Ilabani Israel, that he sent Jesus as a messenger only to the children of Israel, the Jews. The same thing in the Holy Quran, the, uh, the Holy Quran chapter 61 verse 6. Isa Maria Mayabani Israel. And behold, Jesus, the son of Mary, sent to the children of Israel, Ya Bani Israel, O oh, you, the children of Israel, in me, Rasulullah, indeed, I am the messenger of Allah to you. Meaning, the message of Jesus was only meant for the Jews. Does the Bible agree with what the Quran says? Yes. Where? In the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24, in the Bible, Jesus said, I was sent, I was sent only to the worship of the house of Israel. I was, this statement is clear. I was sent only to the worship of the house of Israel. Who were the worship of the house of Israel? Is it the Americans, the Tunisians, the Nigerians? No, the Jews. 
He said, I was sent only to the Lordship of the house of Israel, which means the message of Jesus was restricted only to his own people. The message of Jesus was limited only to his own people. The message of Jesus was confined within the children of Israel because he was not sent to any other nations of the world other than the Jews. Another statement uttered by Jesus in support of what the Quran says is mentioned in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 6. The Bible says, as Jesus was sending his 12 disciples, he said unto them, Go not unto the way of the Gentiles, nor unto any house of the Samaritan, but go ye rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Meaning, the message of Jesus was meant only for the Jews, not for any other nation. But before Jesus Christ left the world, he made a powerful prophecy that I will quote to you in the course of this particular program. You know, in the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, in the Bible, Jesus told his people in the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, and I quote, Jesus said, I still have many things to say unto you. But I have, that is, I have a lot of things to tell you. But you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, spirit of truth, according to another version of the Bible, the book of First John, in the book of John chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, in the Bible, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, meaning a prophet of truth, a spiritual somebody, a man of God, when he come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he shall hear, that is what he will speak. For he will receive some information about me, and he will pass this information to you, and he will make me to be honored, and he will show you the judgment to come. It must call in genders. He, 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 a human being. He, Jesus was referring to somebody other than himself. He said when he come, he will guide you into all the truth. I will analyze this letter. I am explaining the meaning of Islam. I will come back to this statement and we will analyze it critically in the context, within the context of the Bible. You know, therefore Islam is the embodiment of the teaching of all the prophets that came from the Almighty Allah. The Muslims believe in all the prophets of the Almighty Allah. The Muslims do not only believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Muslims also believe in Abraham. They believe in Adam. They believe in Enoch. They believe in all the prophets that I have mentioned to you before. Then what is Islam? Islam, technically, Islam is the religion of total submission and obedience to the will and the commandment of the Almighty Allah. The etymological or linguistical meaning of Islam is what? Submission to God. The literal meaning of Islam is what? Salam, peace. And the technical meaning of Islam is what? Submission. That is why Islam is defined as the religion of total submission and obedience to the commandment of the Almighty Allah. That means the primary aim of the teaching of Islam, the primary objective of the religion of Islam is to invite human beings to serve and worship the Almighty God, to acknowledge the existence of the Supreme God and worship the Almighty God in spirit and in truth, not to serve and worship human beings, not to serve and worship lifeless objects or idols, not to serve and worship the figment of our own imagination, but to serve and worship the Almighty God. Who is this God? The God that has neither beginning of life, no end of life. Who is this God? The God that has no father, no mother. Who is this God? The God that has no sons, no daughters. Who is this God? The God that created any other thing except himself. Because God Almighty didn't create himself. He has no beginning of life and he has no end of life. He is the first without beginning and the last without ending. He created everything and any other things 
belong to the Almighty Allah. He created the heaven without any pillar or foundation that you can see. He created this particular earth. He created the ocean. He created the mountain. He created the trees. He created the engines. He created the genes. He created any other thing you can ever imagine. And the one that is even beyond your own imagination. That is the Almighty Allah. And that is why God Almighty is called the Wonderful Designer. Badi Samawat wal Arbi. The wonderful designer, the wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth. And that which is between the heavens and the earth without copying you from another being. Because there is no any other being. You know, there is no any other deity. There is no any other God other than the Almighty God. Therefore, Islam invites human beings to serve and worship the Almighty God. And why do we have to serve and worship the Almighty God? Because that is the purpose of our own creation. That is the purpose of our own existence. That is the reason why the Almighty Allah created us. <coughs> Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونِ That I did not create the jinns and men. Or that the, or that, the, you know, I did not create the jinns, the assemblies of jinns, and who will be, but only to serve and worship me, to acknowledge my own existence, to serve and worship me, to submit themselves to me. And that act of submission, that act of worship, you render to the Almighty Allah. That is the definition of Islam. You know, that is the purpose of our creation. And God has shown us how we are going to serve and worship Him. And that was what all the prophets of God did. Therefore, what is the fundamental principles or the fundamental teachings of Islam? The first foundation of Islam is to acknowledge the existence of Allah and the oneness of Allah, which we call La ilaha illallah. What is the meaning of this word? La ilaha illallah. That is, there is no any other God except Allah. There is no any other deity that deserves to be worshipped with the qualification of being worshipped except the Almighty Allah. And that was the teaching of all the prophets that came from Allah. And let me quote them. First, before I quote them, Allah says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wa ma arsalna min kabalika min rasulim, illa nuhi ilayhi, annahu la ilaha illa anna fa'abudu. That I did not send any of my messengers before you, O Muhammad, except that I revealed to that messenger or prophet that there is no any other God except me, therefore serve me. This indicates that all the prophets of God, all the prophets of God, from Adam to Jesus, preach about the oneness of God, and they invited their respective people to serve and worship the Almighty God. For example, Prophet Isaiah, according to what the Bible says, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 10 to 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 10 to 13. God Almighty spoke to the children of Israel through the mouth of prophet Isaiah. And he said, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant that I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God. After me, there will be no God. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, and have said, and have proclaimed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God, and that there is none that can deliver out of my hand. This symbolizes what? The unity of Allah. Can you watch Shahada? La ilaha illallah. God says, speaking to the children of Israel through the mouth of prophet Isaiah. That you are my witnesses, says the Lord, the Almighty God, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God. After me, there will be no God. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me, there is no Savior. I have declared and have said and have proclaimed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I think this is clear. Then let us go to Moses. 
in the book of Ezra, chapter 20, verses 2 to 5, God Almighty spoke to the children of Israel through the mouth of Moses and God says, and I quote. Ezra chapter 20, verses 2 to 5. He said, I am the Lord. I am the Lord your God. That I have brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of slavery or out of the house of bondage. You should have no any other God except myself. You should have no any other God except myself. You should not make unto yourself any grieving image or idol of the likeness of anything, either in the heaven above, upon the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. You should not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, meaning I tolerate no rivals. God is one, explaining and signifying His existence and unity, His oneness, His unity. And this statement in the Bible, in Ezra chapter 20, verses 2 to 5, the commandment of God, which is the first commandment that the Almighty God gave to the children of Israel through the mouth of Moses, is also in the Quran. Allah told Moses, In the day and Allah, indeed I am Allah, I am the supreme God of the universe. I am the controller of the universe. I am the sustainer of the universe. I am the originator of the universe. That was what God told Moses. La ilaha illa ana. And that there is no any other God except myself. For above me, therefore sat and worship me only. And that is the same with what is contained in the Bible. And that is based on this commandment received by Moses. In the book of Ezra chapter 20 verses 2 to 5. When you come to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 to 9, when Moses was asked about the first commandment, Moses recalled what God Almighty revealed to him. And Moses said, The first of all the commandments of all is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and thou shalt worship the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, and with all your passion, and thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is, according to Moses, the first commandment is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And Moses said, you shall continue to repeat what? The Lord our God, the Lord is one. That is, la ilaha illallah. Anywhere you go, and you should even write it at the door of your house, the upper part of the door of your houses. That is, la ilaha illallah. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Then Solomon. Another prophet of God. In 1 King chapter 17, verse 20. 1 King chapter 17, verse 20. Solomon said, O oh Lord, the God that created the Jews, the God that created the universe, there is no any other God except yourself, according to what we have heard with our ears. Solomon, prophet Solomon. O oh Lord, O oh God, the God that created Israel and the universe, there is no any other God except you, according to what we have heard with our ears. Which means that Solomon even had this from his ancestors, that there is only one God from the prophets that came before him. Then David, the father of Solomon. David, the father of Solomon. In Second Chronicles, chapter 6, Verse 14 in the Bible, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 14. David said, O oh Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in both the heavens and on earth. O oh Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you, meaning there is no God with you in both the heavens and on earth. Before I come to the statement of Jesus, let us go back. A little bit to the statement of prophet Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 6, God Almighty spoke to prophet Isaiah that I am the first without a beginning and the last without ending and that there is no any other God with me. I am the first without a beginning and the last without an end and there is no any other God with me. 
Do you know God better than God knows himself? Then, in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 8, God Almighty asked a question. He said, Is there any other God along with me? Is there any other God along with God? As partner or co equal with God? Then he said, No, there is no God with me. I know not any. He said, I don't know any other God along with me that share my own glory. That is why when you read the book of Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8, he said, I am the only true God and I will not share my glory and attribute with any other being. I am the only true God and I will not share my glory or attribute with any other being. And when you read the book of Isaiah chapter 46 verse 9, he said, Behold, I am the only true God, and that there is no any other God along with me. Who is like me? Let him come and proclaim that before me. <laughs> you see, this is what we call what? Kalma to Shahada, La ilaha illallah. Now, before I quote the statement of Jesus, let us see what Allah says in Quran chapter 3 verse 18. Shahid Allah Anna ilaha illahua. Allah had Allah has testified that there is no any other God except him. One the angels in, in heaven has testified that there is no any other God except the Almighty Allah. You know, the men of knowledge, the men of knowledge has testified, meaning the prophet of Allah has testified that there is no any other God except the Almighty Allah. La ilaha illa huwa aziz al hakim. There is no any other God except the Almighty Allah. He is the all powerful, you know, the all wise. Do we also testify that there is no any other God except Allah? Yeah. We all testify that. La ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa Allah. That is why whenever a non Muslim want to accept Islam, the first thing he will say is, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa Allah. That I testify that there is no any other God except Allah. And that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. I will discuss that issue after. You know? This indicates that you cannot accept Islam, you cannot embrace Islam without believing in the existence and the unity of Allah. That is the first foundation of what? Islam. Then, what did Jesus say about the oneness of God? Because we have some people talking about Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We have some people equalizing Jesus with God calling Jesus God, stigmatizing Jesus as God, stigmatizing Mary, the mother of Jesus, as a goddess, stigmatizing the Holy Spirit as God, believing in the dogma of Trinity. Did Jesus actually spoke about the dogma of Trinity? No, according to what the Bible says. According to what Jesus says in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 31. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 31 in the New Testament we are told that one of the scribes came unto Jesus and he said unto Jesus Master what is the first of all the commandments of all what is the most important commandment what is the first commandment among all the commandments of God Jesus said is that your question he said yes then Jesus said Okay, listen. Then Jesus quoted Moses. He quoted what Moses says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. Jesus said, The first of all the commandments of all is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, Jahweh Elu Elu, Jahweh Eka. This is not Arabic. It's the language of Jesus, Aramaic. Jahweh Elu Elu, Jahweh Eka. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. And thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. And thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then Jesus says, there is no any other greater commandment greater than this. Which indicates that Jesus said, Jahweh Eluhenu, Jahweh Echa. The Lord our God, 
the Lord is one. Now, the point of emphasis is here, is the Lord our God, which means the God of Jesus also. Included, he is included. He said our God. Then can he be the God? No, no he said our God. Then if you are the God, why say our when you are the God? Indicating that he was not the God. He said, the Lord our God, the Lord, Jesus said, is one. And thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might, and with all your soul. And thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then Jesus said, there is no any other commandment greater than this. Meaning, there is no any other commandment greater than what? Kadamatu Shahada. La ilaha illa Allah. Allah. And said, then the scribe that threw this question to Jesus was listening to what Jesus said and he replied back to Jesus because he knew the answer. He just wanted to try Jesus and he replied back to Jesus in the book of Mark chapter 12 verses 32 to 34. He said, yes, master, you have actually spoken the truth in that there is only one God and that there is no any other God except the almighty God. And the Lord our God, the Lord our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and with all our mind, is better than born offering and sacrifice. Then Jesus replied back to him, If actually you believe what you see, you are not far away from the kingdom of God. <laughs> what is the meaning of that? Meaning, anyone that believes in Kadamata Shahada, La ilaha illallah, he is not far away from the kingdom of God. You know? So, Jesus preach the oneness of God. Another statement of Jesus, John chapter 17, verse 10. Jesus said, and I quote, John chapter 17, verse 3. John chapter 17, verse 3. Jesus said, that this is life eternal. Meaning, this is how to achieve salvation. He was speaking to the people of his time before the coming of Prophet Muhammad because he was their prophet at that time. Jesus was their prophet. He was their spiritual teacher. And the Bible called Jesus a prophet of God in seven different places. First, Matthew chapter 21, verses 10 to 11. When Jesus was riding on a donkey, the Jews asked, Who is this man? And one of the disciples of Jesus answered that this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. Second, in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 46, in the Bible, Jesus is called a prophet of God. In the book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 4, Jesus is called a prophet of God. In the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 32, Jesus is called a prophet of God. In the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 16, Jesus is called a prophet of God. In the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 19, Jesus is called a prophet of God. In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 14, Jesus is called a prophet of God. Allah. Allah. A prophet of God. Seven places in the Bible. Matthew chapter 21, verse 46, Matthew chapter 21, verses 10 to 11, Luke chapter 7, verse 16, Luke chapter 13, verse 32, Luke chapter 24, verse 19, Mark chapter 6, verse 4, then John chapter 6, verse 14, and also uh, uh, the last one, okay, the complete seven, five, seven. It's called a prophet of God. So, a prophet of God to where? To the children of Israel. Because he said in Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 that I was sent only to the Lordship of the house of Israel. Now this was what Jesus told them. How to attain salvation. Jesus said, this is life eternal that they should know you as the only true God and to believe in Jesus whom you have sent. That is John chapter 17 verse 3. Jesus said, this is life eternal that they should know you as the only true God. When you say the only true God, that is the meaning of what? La ilaha illallah. That there is no any other God except that God. That is why Jesus called him the only true God. And also Jesus whom you have sent. Who sent Jesus? The only true God sent Jesus as a messenger to them. So at that time, if somebody wants to embrace the religion of Jesus, which was Islam, he will say, La ilaha illallah, Isa Rasulullah. Because that time Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come. In the last time of Moses, if you want to embrace Islam, the religion of Moses, you will say, La ilaha illallah, Musa Rasulullah. 
and that Moses is a messenger of God. You know? Therefore, Jesus preached about what? He preached about the oneness of the Almighty God. Now we are asking a simple question. Because more than 90% of the Christians, or 99% of the Christians, believe that Jesus is God. Are you not hearing this from the above? They say that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Jesus is the Almighty God. Jesus is co-equal with God. Jesus and God are one. That is what they are saying. We should ask this simple question. Is there any single verse in any of the version of the Bible where Jesus arrogated the power of the Almighty God to himself? Is there any verse in any of the version of the Bible where Jesus said that I am God? Nowhere. That was caught from the statement of Jesus. You will understand. In the Bible, Jesus said, I am not God. Do you want me to show you the places in the Bible where Jesus said he is not God? Yes. Yes. Number one. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 17. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 17. We are told that somebody came unto Jesus. And he asked Jesus one question. And he said, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life so that I will enter the kingdom of heaven? How can I be saved? Before Jesus answered his question, Jesus said unto him, Why thou callest me good? Why do you call me good? What is the meaning of this good? That is perfection. Why do you call me perfect? Then Jesus said, there is no any other being that is good but one, that is God. No. There is no any other being that is good, meaning there is no any other being that is perfect, that is God. Then Jesus said, if you want to have eternal life, if you want to have salvation, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, if you want to enter al -Janna, Obey the commandment of God. And what is the first commandment? Allah. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus said, obey the commandment. That is number one. Jesus said he is not God. And that only God Almighty is perfect. The second place where Jesus said, I am not God, in the Bible. Any Bible. John chapter 5 verse 30. John chapter 5, verse 30, I quote, Jesus said, that I, Jesus, can do nothing by myself. I, Jesus, can do nothing by myself. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not of my own will, but I seek the will of God who sent me. Can God be sent by another God? A supreme God to be sent by another supreme God? No. no. He said, I, Jesus, can do nothing by myself. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Because I seek not of my own will, but I seek the will, you know, of the God who sent me. Which means that Jesus was speaking of a God other than himself. And that he was sent. And if he was sent, he became a messenger of who? The Almighty God, because He was sent by who? By the Almighty God. That is the second point. Now, when Jesus said, I can do nothing by myself, what is the meaning of that? What He meant by this statement is, the power to raise the dead, to cure the blind, to cure the lepers, to walk on the water, to cast out demons, and so many other miracles given to me by God, is not within my own power, but it was given to me by the Almighty God. Allah. That is the meaning of on my own authority, I can do nothing. Meaning, Jesus cannot perform miracles without the power of God, without the support of God. Meaning, it was the Almighty God that gave him that power to perform miracles in order to prove to the people that he was sent by the Almighty God. You get that point? Therefore, Jesus alayhi salam was not the author of the power. He used to perform the miracles. And the Bible even confirmed it. 
in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Yes, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 22. Peter, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus, he made the children of Israel debating and arguing within themselves with respect to the message of Jesus and his personality. And Peter said, because Peter was one of the companions of Jesus, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus. His name is mentioned as one of the disciples in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. And Peter told them that ye men of Israel, Yahweh Israel, hear this word. Jesus of Nazareth is a man approved by God. Men sent by God. By miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you all know. Meaning, Jesus is a man sent by God. By miracles. And God gave him miracles. Was he the only one that performed this kind of miracles? No. no. Jesus was not the only one that raised the dead. Even according to the Bible, Elijah, 1 King chapter 17, verses 21 to 23, Elijah raised the dead. 2 King chapter 4, verses 32 to 35, Elisha raised the dead. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 13, Prophet Ezekiel went to cemetery, bending ground. You know? And he told the whole dead and lifeless people that died for quite a long time to rise up and went go back to their various houses. Wow. In the Bible, in the Bible, it's mentioned Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 13. Prophet Ezekiel, he went to bending ground. Countless number. He said, oh yeah, wake up, wake up, wake up, fire. He raised countless number of dead bodies. Not only Ezekiel. Moses alayhi salam, Prophet Moses, in the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 4 verses 1 to 3, Moses was holding an ordinary dry staff, stick, and God asked Moses, what is that in your right hand, Moses? It's also in the Bible, Exodus chapter 4 verses 1 to 3, Moses, what are you holding by your right hand? God asked Moses this question in order to call his attention to that thing. And Moses says, it is my staff, my stick. God asked Moses, what do you use it for? He was asking Moses because he wanted to draw the attention of Moses to a very important thing. And Moses says, I use it to, you know, control my sheep and to chase away wild animals in the bush. And God asked Moses, okay, Moses, this is your beautiful stuff. Throw it on the ground. And Moses threw it on the ground. For is I here, high yet and just ah. And it becomes what? A mighty python. Snake. Active emotion. Moses turned and he wanted to run. God says, come back. Hold it by your right hand. And as Moses took it, it changes back to a normal condition. And Allah also asked Moses, Moses, take your hand and put it under your armpit or in your pocket. And he did that. And it becomes as white as snow, glittering the eyes. And God says, okay, now, go to Pharaoh, that tyrant that arrogated my power and attribute to himself. Go to Pharaoh. If he asks you, what are the evidence that you were sent by God to him? Then show him this miracle. Who gave Moses this power? No. And Moses used the same staff, snake, to separate the fountain of water in the wilderness. He struck the water and it separated. It's mentioned in the Bible in Ezra chapter 14 verse 22 and it's mentioned also in Surah to Ta'a and in Surah to Arab and other verses of the Holy Quran. There were other prophets of Allah that performed great wonders, signs and miracles before the coming of Jesus. Abraham, do you know the miracle of Abraham? Abraham was taken and he was cast into the fire. And Allah commanded the fire, Ya na rukuni baradam wa salam on Allah Ibrahim. Oh fire, be cool and air conditioned to Abraham. And Abraham came out of the fire unaffected, without being harmed. Therefore, the miracles performed by Jesus 
was the power of the Almighty Allah that was working on him. Just as the power of the Almighty Allah worked on Abraham, worked on Moses, worked on Ezekiel, Elijah, and other prophets of Allah. That is why Jesus said, on my own authority, I can do nothing. That is the second place where Jesus said, I am not God. The third place in the Bible where Jesus said uh, he is not God is in the book of John, chapter 12, verse 49. John, chapter 12, verse 49. And I quote the statement of Jesus. Jesus said, I have not spoken on my own authority, but the God who sent me gave me the commandment of what I should say and what I should speak unto you. The God who sent me. <coughs> meaning he was sent by the Almighty God, meaning he is not God. That is the third place. The first place in the Bible where Jesus said he is not God is where he was asked about the time that the world will end. In the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 32, and the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 36, Jesus said, Of that day and that hour, no one knows, not even myself, nor the angels in heaven, but only the Almighty God knows when the world will end. Jesus Mark, Mark chapter 13 verse 32 and Matthew chapter 24 verse 36. These are the only places you can find them. Mark chapter 13 verse 32 and Matthew chapter 24 verse 36. Jesus said, of that day and that hour, no one knows when the world will end. Not even myself, I don't know. The angels in heaven do not know, but only the Almighty God knows. If Jesus was God, he would have known when the world will end because he created the heaven, he created the earth, he appointed the time. But he said, I don't know. Was he saying, I don't know in his capacity as God? No. No. Indicating that he was not God. Then, the fifth place, number five, where Jesus said he is not God, is in the book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 34. The book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 34, and the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 46. When Jesus was in the midst of his enemies, according to what the Bible says, Mark chapter 15, verse 34, Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, Jesus said in his language, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, meaning, my God, my God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When Jesus said, my God, my God, was he saying, myself, myself, why have I forsaken me? <laughs> no, he said, my God, my God, Elahi, Elahi, my God, Elahi, my God, inna Allah harabi wa rabbukum, wa rabbukum, indeed Allah is my Lord, and Allah is your Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So when Jesus said, my God, if I say my father, am I the, the, the my father? Am I the my father? No. <laughs> or if I say my brother, am I the my brother? No. No, I am referring to a being other than myself. So when Jesus said, My God, my God, he was not the God. He was complaining. Then number six in the Bible, where Jesus said he is not God. Number six in the Bible, where Jesus said he is not God, is in the book of uh in the book of John, chapter 20, verse 17. The book of John, chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, listen to this statement. Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, I am ascending unto my Father and your Father, unto my God and your God. I am ascending unto my Father and your Father, unto my God and your God. What is the meaning of this word, Father? Which most of the Christians misunderstood. The word Father is used in a figurative or allegorical or parabolical sense, not in the literal sense, not in the biological sense, because this word had been in use even before the coming of Jesus among the cultures and the traditions of the Jews. That is the reason why when you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 6, Moses said to the children of Israel, according to that portion of the Bible, that why are you abusing God? Why are you also insulting me? And why are you disobeying the commandment of God? Is he not your father who created you? 
What is the meaning of this? Meaning, your sustainer, your controller, your creator. It doesn't mean that God Almighty has a biological son or a biological daughter or a son or daughter. No, God Almighty does not. Lam Yalit! He did not give back to anybody and nobody gave back to him. And now he could not have wallet. How can he Allah begat a son? Walam takullahu shahiba. When he has no consort, he has no wife, what can I call the shayin? And he is the one that created everything. Everything already belongs to God. Then what does he have to take a son to? Everything, all we, the sons of our various parents, we all belong to God. The animals belong to God. The angels belong to God. The prophet belongs to God. He manufactured them. He created them. Then what does he have to do with his hand? No. We will come to that topic. You know? Then he said, Unto my God and your God. My God and your God. Indicating that Jesus Christ is not God. Then John chapter 4 verse 34. Jesus said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his job. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his job. Then John chapter 8 verse 42. Jesus said, I did not come on my own, but he, God, sent me. Then John chapter 7 verse 16. Jesus said, my teachings, my teachings, meaning my doctrines, are not mine, but they belong to him who sent me. Then in the book, finally, in the book of John chapter 17 verse 4, Jesus said, Oh God, I have finished the work that you have given me to do. And I have declared your glory and attribute to the people that you gave me out of the world, meaning the Jews. He said, Oh God, I have finished the work that you have given me to do. Indicating that Jesus was a servant of God. He was a slave of the Almighty God. So when Jesus said that, John chapter 17 verse 4, thank you. I have finished the work that you have given me to do. Now, when Jesus said that he has finished the work that God has given him to do, which means that crucifixion was not part of the work that God gave him to do. You get it? Because he made this statement because before his purported crucifixion, he has finished the job. Then why are you saying that he come to die for your sin? He has already finished. He pronounced it that he has finished the work that God gave him meaning to preach the message of the Almighty God to the people. He has finished the job. You know, then what did let us see? We have now seen some verses. There are more than 1,000 verses in the Bible from this mouth of Jesus where he claimed not to be God. But let us look at it from the practical point of view. What did Jesus do that proved that he was not God, according to the Bible? That is what I want to mention now. I will mention four or five. What Jesus did that proved that he cannot be God, meaning he was not God. He proved it. First, the first thing that Jesus did that proved that Jesus Christ was not God, Jesus slept. <laughs> Where in the Bible did Jesus live? In the book of Matthew chapter 8 verses 23 to 24 and the book of Mark chapter 8 verses 23 to 24. Jesus slept. Meaning Jesus was sleeping inside a ship. And the ship was about to be capsized, meaning to sink. He was still sleeping, he did not know what was happening. Until one of the crew members came and said, well, come on, let's see what did happen. He did not know the condition of that particular sheep. I hope you understand. So, can God, does God Almighty sleep? No. Allah says, Allah, Allah, la ilaha illallah. He sees beside whom there is no any other God. Allah, you. The one that ever lived, continue to live. The one that never ceased from existing. al Kayun, the same subsistence, eternal. La ta'akuduhu salatin wala Neither slumber nor sleep overtake God. God Almighty neither slumber nor sleep. But here is a man that slept. 
and they say he is God. <laughs> and the Bible also testifies to what Allah says in the Quran, in the book of Psalms, chapter 121, verse 4. Psalm 121, verse 4. The Bible says, God neither slumber nor sleep. God does not sleep or slumber. You know the meaning of slumbering. He neither sleep nor slumber. Now, if God neither slumber nor sleep and Jesus slept, automatically Jesus is not God. The problem is done. Then number two. Number two. The Bible says Jesus was hungry. Who was hungry? Jesus. Where is it mentioned? In the book of Matthew, chapter 21. Verses 18 to 19. Matthew chapter 21, verses 18 to 19. The Bible says, As Jesus was hungry, he saw a certain fig tree apart. And he thought that if he goes there, he would get something to eat. On going there, he found nothing but dry leaves. Leaves. And he became disappointed. And because of annoyance, because an angry man, a hungry man is an angry man, he cut that tree and the tree withered away. Now, there are two points of consideration here. The first thing, why did Jesus go to that particular tree? To find something to eat. Oh, he was hungry. Second, the second reason why Jesus went there, he touched that. It has fruit, meaning he did not know that. Which means that he did not lack, he lacked the knowledge of the condition of the tree. Yes. You get it? Can God be ignorant of what he created? Yes. You, will, you will have known from there that he does not have Why do you go there? That is the second point. He was hungry. The third point, the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 19, that Jesus ate and drank. Matthew chapter 11 verse 19. Jesus ate and he drank. And if Jesus ate and drank, he must go to twelve. Ah, is it not true? Yeah. All the prophets of God, we are used to going to toilet. Every human being, okay. Every human being that eats food must go where? Yeah. To toilet. Because of the process of metabolism. The Bible says Jesus ate. And yeah, Luke chapter 22, uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 41 to 43, Jesus was given a piece of fish and he took that fish and he ate in the presence of his disciples, indicating that he was not a God. Can God be overpowered by hunger? No. 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 I am going to stop here. We will continue after the prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Luke chapter 24, verse 41 to 43. He was given a piece of fish and meat. Because there are many things we are going to talk, inshallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, that Allah has given us the uh, opportunity to observe our Asr prayer. I mean, Allah accept our prayer in the motion of the place of Allah. So, Alhamdulillah, as we, we are talking before. We, we are talking about the fact that Jesus alayhi salam is not God. Because the Bible says he is not God and Jesus himself admitted the fact that he is not God. So I said that I, I am going to give only uh, five places in the Bible. Even though they are many because there are so many other topics I want to discuss with us. You know that proves that Jesus Christ is not uh, a God. Now, you know the belief of the Christians. Even the Christians provided us with the evidence to prove to them that Jesus is not God. And what is this evidence? Everyone knows that the Almighty God, the one that created the universe, can never die at any time. That is why the Quran addressed him as al Hayyu, the one that ever lived. What our Kala Allah put your trust in the one that always lives and he never dies. That is the Almighty God. You know, Allah is al Hayyu al the one that ever lives from everlasting to everlasting and he never dies. 
Allah, you know, is above the power of death because He created death. Allah bi khalak al Allah bi khalak al maut wal hayat li yabluwakum ayyukum asal amal. It is He, Allah, that created life and death. Li yabluwakum in order to try you, to test you. Ayyukum asal amal. To see which of you, meaning which of you is best in conduct. Therefore, death is also what one of the creation of Allah. Life is also what one of the creation of the Almighty Allah. Therefore, God never dies at any time. Just as the Quran says that God never dies at any time, the Bible also says in First Timothy chapter six, verses sixteen to seventeen, that God Almighty never dies at any time. God is from everlasting to everlasting. The same thing in Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17. The Bible says, God is from everlasting to everlasting. He never sees from a distance. The same thing in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 12 in the Bible. The Bible says, God never dies at any time. Meaning, God Almighty is above the power of death. He cannot die. Because if God is to die, who will be in control of the universe? Nobody. Then, do you know what the Christian says? The Christian says that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Is that what they are saying? That Jesus was killed on the cross, according to the Christian. Then let us use their reason. Can God die? Then if they believe that Jesus died, then they are saying that Jesus is not God. Because God can never die. And God cannot be killed by any person. You know, so if the Christian believe that Jesus is God and he died, that is contradiction. That is what? Contradiction. Therefore, this proof that Jesus, the son of Mary, can never be God. Then the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 26, verses 62 to 67, that Jesus was beaten and he was slapped and they spat on his face. Can God be slapped? No. No. I would be lying. Therefore, Jesus is not God. And he can never be God. And he does not have the attributes of God. He was a servant, a messenger, and a prophet of the Almighty Allah. Now, why did the Christian call Jesus God? Why do they call him Jesus God? Or why do they call Jesus Son of God? One of the reasons of the Christians is the way a manner Jesus came into this world. Meaning, he was born in a, in a miraculous way. He was born in a wonderful way. He was born through the Virgin Mary. Meaning, without a husband or without a father. So, because Jesus was born through the Virgin Mary, without a father, then the Christian decided to call him the son of God, O oh God. Then this evidence is untenable. This evidence is untenable because from the history of the creation of human beings, we have four different ways in which God Almighty created man on earth. We have four different ways in which God Almighty created man, human beings on earth. The first creation of God was the creation of a man without a father and without a mother. Who was that man? Adam. The Bible confirmed that in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. The Quran confirmed that in Surah al Hijri chapter 15 verse 29 that Adam was created from clay without a father and without a mother. Is that not a miracle? Is that not a wonder? God created a human being from ordinary clay and he became a, a living entity without father and without a mother. Second, there was a woman that was created from a man without a mother. Who was that woman? Eve Hawa. Eve Hawa. Eve. She was created from a man without a mother. That was Eve. Is that a miracle or not? Yeah. Third, 
the creator of the creation. The Bible confirms also the creation of Eve from a man. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 23, God caused Adam to have a deep sleep. And God Almighty used the rib of Adam and he created a woman and gave Adam to that woman. He gave Adam that woman. And Adam said, This is the bone of my womb and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. She became the wife of Adam. The Quran confirmed that. Oh, men, fear God that created you from a single person, Adam. And from that person, he created his wife, Eve. And from Adam and Eve, meaning from the conjugal relationship, the biological relationship of Adam and Eve, relationship between husband and wife, Allah multiplied us in great number, men and women. Is that not also a miracle? Yes. It's a miracle now from ordinary water, ejaculated food, from the journey touch of a human being. God Almighty created a man, human being. He multiplied us. That is why Allah says in Surah to Nazari, chapter 53 of the Quran, Afarai to Matumu, do you see the spark that you ejacul ejaculated from your from your genitals? Are you the one that changed it to become a human being? I'm not going to call it good. Or are we the creator? Meaning, the Almighty Allah changed the sperm that you ejaculated, the egg of the woman and the sperm of the man. The Almighty Allah created a human being. That is the third creation. The first one, a man without a father and without a mother. The second one, a woman from a man without a mother. The third one, you and I from fathers and mothers, husband and wife. Then remember one, forgot to perfect everything. Then, forgot to perfect the creation of human being, just as he created a woman from a man without a mother, he now created a man from a woman without a father. Who was that man? Jesus. So just as Allah created a woman from Adam without a mother, so also God Almighty created a man from a woman without a father. Because he created a woman before without a mother. Now he created a man without a mother. Who was that man? Jesus. The miraculous birth and conception of Jesus. In the Quran. Because when the angel of God, though I have special topic on that, when the angel of God visited Mary, and he said, In the you must be kalimata mingu. God is giving you glad tidings of a command, a pronouncement, from him. His name will be the Messiah, meaning the anointed one. Isa, Jesus, in the Maryam, and he will be addressed after his mother. Isa, in the Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary. Then Mary said, How can I be able to give back to his son? When no man has touched me, Walam Akubagia, and I am not a harlot, I am not a prostitute. Then Allah says, Anna Kadadikin, the angel told her, that Anna Kadadikin Lahu Yakaruku Mayesha. That it was to die, Lord, the Almighty God that sent me to announce to you that you are going to give birth to a son, even though you have no husband. Everything is possible with God because He created what whoever He wishes. Whenever Allah decided on the creation of anything, he will only say unto it, be, and it will be. Whatever God Almighty wanted to create. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, that with God, all things are possible. Therefore, Jesus was created in the womb of Mary. What the angel did was that the angel just breathed and that spirit, breath of life, found its way into her vulva and materialized in the form of a human being. Just as God Almighty, through his angel, blew into ordinary clay and that clay became Adam and his son. So Jesus was created in the womb of Mary. 
Does God Almighty create another God? No. Now, from the Quranic point of view, what is the implication of worshiping Jesus as God or calling Jesus God? What is the implication? Allah says in the Holy Quran, five verses. Quran chapter 5, verses 72 to 75. Quran chapter 5, verses 72 to 75. That is Surah Al Ma'ida. Allah says, Lakar kafara nazina karu inna laha huwa al masih ibn Maryam. They are disbelievers. Those who say that the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, is God. Meaning, any person that calls Jesus God, or any person that worships Jesus as his God, he disbelieves in the Almighty God that sent Jesus. He also rejected the message of Jesus. Wakar al masih but Jesus himself told his people, Ya Bani Israel, O oh, you, the children of Israel, Ibnullah Rabbi wa Rabbakum, worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord, my God and your God. In now my Yushrik Billah, whosoever ascribe any partnership to God, Fakan Haram Allah wa Alayhi Jannah, Allah has forbidden paradise for him. His final destination is the hellfire. And for the evil doers, there will be no helper. So Jesus told his people that whosoever ascribe any partnership to God, he will never enter paradise. And he will be, you know, spend, he will spend his eternity inside the hellfire. Then Allah said, like Al Kafar al Lazina Kalu, in Allaha Salus in Salasa. They are disbelievers, those who say that Allah is one of the triune gods, meaning Trinity. When there is no any other God except the Almighty Allah. If they desist not from what they are saying, a heavy chastisement will face them on the day of judgment. Afana itubuna ila Allah. Will they not repent to Allah? Will they not ask Allah to forgive them? Wa yastakfiruna and ask the forgiveness of the Almighty Allah? Wallahu gafuru rahim. For Allah is unforgiving, most merciful. Then Allah says, Mar Masih ibn Maryam illa Rasulun. Indeed, Christ, Jesus, the son of Mary, is only a messenger from Allah. You know? Only a messenger from Allah. Can help me come to Jerusalem. They are, we are messengers and prophets that have passed away before the coming of Jesus. Kana ya kulani toab wa umu husebika. And the Quran say the mother of Jesus was a saint, a holy woman, Maryam. Kana ya kulani toab. They both used to eat food. Both Jesus and his mother ate food. On the scene, kain for nuba yino nafuman ayat. How we make the message clear to them? Some wonder Allah you fakun and see how they are deluded. So these verses of the Holy Quran prove the position of Jesus as a man of God, as a prophet of God, as a messenger of God, as a servant of the Almighty Allah, and that he is not the Almighty God. This indicates that Jesus is not God. Then let us let me take you back a little bit. When the mother of Jesus gave back to Jesus, the Jews were not there. When the angel of Allah appears to the Virgin Mary to announce unto her the gift of having a holy child, the Jews were not there. The Jews knew Mary. They knew the parent of Mary. They knew the house of Mary. And they knew that Mary did not marry. But they saw Mary parading with a child, a fatherless child, on her shoulder. And Mary walked majestically towards the temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. And when the Jews saw Mary parading with a child, naturally, they have to question her as to where she got that particular child. Because they were not there when the angel of God appears unto Mary to announce unto her the gift of having a holy child. So on seeing Mary, you know, they became somehow flabbergasted and confounded. And they asked Mary, 
and Mary took the child, Jesus, carrying him on her shoulder, and Jesus was fucking her priest. When they saw her, Kalu they say, Ya Mariamu, Mary! Like Abji Itishai and Faria, you have come with a new thing, you have come with a strange thing, you have committed an offense. Ya Okta Harun, oh sister of Aaron. Makana Abu Kimara Asama in Makana Komuki Magia, your father was not a wicked man. Meaning, your father was not a woman either. Your father, Mary, your father, Imran, the chief Imam of uh, the Temple of Solomon, Imran, he was the father of Mary and the grandfather of Jesus. Your father was not a wicked man, meaning he was not a woman either. Mumakana Komuki Magia, and your mother, Hannatu, Hannah. The mother of Mary, meaning the grandmother of Jesus, was not a harlot or a prostitute. Then they say, Mary, where do you get this child? Where do you get this picking? Mary did not utter a single word. She did not speak. Because the angel of God told Mary, for that if you do come across any person and such a person ask you as to where you get this particular child, don't speak to him. Say that I have vowed myself to fast before the most gracious Allah. And that today I will not speak to any other woman there. So Mary did not speak to them for a shattered a lady, but she pointed to the child. And that time, Jesus was a child the day he was born. Newly born baby without even circumcision. You know a newly born baby when he is born. So Jesus was a child the day he was born, the hour he was born, the very hour he was born, Mary was carrying him. And Mary pointed to him that the Jews should ask Jesus. Then the Jews said, How do you expect us to speak with a child in the cradle? A little child that was born to him. We are asking you as to where you get this particular child. How do you come about him? How did you give up to him when you have no husband? When your mother was not a wicked woman and you are referring us to this child? From there, the Almighty Allah. The God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Jesus, commanded Jesus to speak to them. Oh. He commanded Jesus to become a lawyer to his mother, to defend his mother. And Jesus started speaking. And this is what Jesus said. Kala inni Abdullah, indeed I am the servant of Allah. Atani al-Kitab, Allah has given me the book, the Injil. And Allah has made me to become his prophet. And Allah has made me blessed wheresoever I may be. And Allah has enjoyed on me prayer and charity as long as I live. And Allah has made me to be kind to my mother, to be obedient to my mother, not to be aggressive to my mother. Wassalamu alayya, the peace of Allah is on me. Yawma wulitu, the day that I was born. Wa yawma amutu, the day that I shall die. Wa yawma ufafu hayya, and on the day of judgment, when Allah will bring me back to life. Allah. This we are the statement of Jesus the day he was born. This was indeed the first miracle performed by Jesus on earth. The first miracle performed by Jesus on earth, according to the Quran, he spoke to the people the day he was born, the hour he was born. He started preaching to his people. Is this miracle in the Bible? No, it's not in the Bible. One of the Christians, when I was preaching at Ajaguni in Lagos, one of the Christians asked me, that this miracle you mentioned in the Quran, why is it not mentioned in our Bible? Because our Bible came before the Quran. He said, but why is this miracle absent in our Bible? He was a pastor, but now he's a Muslim. He converted to Islam. My thing. You know? He said, why is this miracle not mentioned in our Bible? I said, the reason is in your Bible. He said, where? I said, open the book of John, chapter 20, verse 30. The book of John, chapter 20, verse 30 in the Bible, and I quote. 
that Jesus did many other miracle signs and wonders in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. Which book? The Bible. Bible. The Bible says in John chapter 20, verse 30, that Jesus did many other miracle signs and wonders in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. Therefore, if Jesus did many other miracle signs and wonders in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in the Bible, then how do you know that speaking the very day he was born was not one of the unrecorded miracles in the Bible? My question is, hey, oh God, thank you. Will this our Bible get problem? <laughs> you see? So, according to the Quran, the first miracle that Jesus did was to speak to the people the very day he was born. And who gave Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this knowledge? The Almighty Allah. And Jesus said, it was the Almighty Allah that gave Prophet Muhammad the knowledge. In the book of John chapter 16, verse 12 to 14, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot be at them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, meaning a man of truth, a spiritual somebody, a prophet of truth, when he comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatsoever he shall hear from God, that is what he will say. He will receive some information about me, and he will pass this information to you, and he will honor me, and he will show you the judgment of God. You know, so that was the first miracle performed by Jesus. Dalek and Isa and Maria. Such is Jesus, the son of Mary. Count al a statement of truth, and not the fear of the rule, concerning that which they are disputing with one another, the Jews and the Christians. Ma kana the Nahi Ayyata Kizan Yu Wadadila. It is incompatible with the nature of Allah. It is incompatible with the attribute of Allah. It is incompatible with the unity of Allah. It is incompatible with the supremacy of Allah. And you are not a human being. Then you should become a son. Because God is not a human being. God is not an animal. Because whenever God Almighty decided to create anything, for in the Maya, you are not a human being. He will only say unto it, Come, appear, be, and it will be. When God was creating the heaven, was he, you know, laboring like a, an electrician or a, a laborer or a builder, bringing block, I have taken block? No. Come fire, come. Through come fire, come. He created the heaven and the earth, and that which is between the heaven and the earth. Then Jesus said, Wa inna Allah, indeed Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum. Allah is my Lord and He is your Lord. Fa'abudu, worship Allah. Hadha Salatul Mustaqim. That is the straight path. Now, ma, now, let us ask this simple question. Did Jesus worship God? And if Jesus worshiped Allah, how did He worship Allah? The Bible made us to understand. In the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39, the Bible says, And Jesus walked a little further, and he fell down on his face, and he performed the truth. He prostrated with his face to the ground, and he prayed to the Almighty God. <laughs> Who are the people that used to perform the truth? The Muslims. That is the mode of worship of the Muslims. Jesus prostrated before the Almighty God. Before that prostration, he has to stand. And he has to adjust himself. And he has to bow down. And he has to go to the position of prostitution. And that was what he did. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39 in the Bible. Not only Jesus wrote. Not only Jesus. Moses and Aaron. In the book of Numbers, chapter 20, verses 5 to 6. The Bible says, Moses and Aaron fell down on their faces. And they worshiped God. Meaning they prostrated with their faces to the ground. They perform to do. Not only Moses and Aaron, Daniel, according to the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10, in the Bible, Daniel fell down on his face and he worshiped the Almighty God. Oh, 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 oh. Not only Daniel, uh, Elijah, 
According to 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 39 to 42, the Bible says, Prophet Elijah fell down on his face and he worshiped the Almighty God. Not only Prophet Elijah, Joshua, in the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verses 14 to 15, the Bible says, Joshua came into the altar and he removed his shoe and he entered the altar and he fell down on his face and he worshiped the Almighty God. Oh. Not only Joshua. No. The Bible says, Ezra, the high priest. You want to see Juma'a prayer in the Bible? Yes. yes. Congregational prayer in the Bible. Juma'a prayer in the Bible. Mm. With Imam. You know, recitation of Fatiha, Bowen, Ruku, I mean, Rosen of half to the level of the ears. That is in the book of Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 4 to 6. And Safu, 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 Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 4 to 6. Ezra the high priest, you know, the Levi's Utuba, Samuel, in the masjid, before the assemblies of men and women that could understand, in the language that they could understand, he delivered the Samuel. After the Samuel, they woke up and they made Safu, yes, some by his right hand, the others, the others by his left hand. They made Shafu, and Ezra the, pre, the priest was above the people. He was in front of the people, meaning he was the Imam, and he started reciting. You know, in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise be unto Allah, the Lord of the world, the most compassionate, the most merciful, the, the, the most compassionate, the most merciful, you alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help, guide us unto the straight path, the path of those whom you have shown your favor, not the path of those who are your anger, and not the path of those who go astray, and they all answer, Amen, 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 Amen. Just as we recite Fatiha, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawmiddin, Iyya Kana Abudu wa Iyya Kana Sta'in, Ihdina Surat Al-Musta'in, Surat Al-Nathina Am-Amta Alayhim, Gayr Al-Magdudi Alayhim wa Raddalim. Amen. That was what Ezra did and his people. And after that, Ezra raised his hands to the level of, you know, his ears. And but after praising God, the great God, Allah Akbar, and the Bible says, and he bowed down. He bowed down, made a ruku, and they all bowed down. They followed him and did the same thing. And the Bible says, and Ezra went to the position of prostration to perform the Jew, and all of them did the same thing. Is that not congregational prayer? That is what you see in the Bible. At Hawaii Day in Lagos, all those three. I asked some Christians to read the Bible and demonstrated it. They found themselves praying like Muslims. They say, now this is a religion. Oh, 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 oh. Indicating that all the prophets of Allah are Muslims, even the angels of Allah, according to the Bible. In the book of Revelation chapter 11, verse 16. Revelation chapter 11, verse 16. The Bible says that all the angels that are Surrounded, that surrounded the throne of God, bowed down and prostrated with their faces to the ground. They sat and worship the Almighty God. They performed to do. You know, now, this kind of salat we used to observe here in Nigeria or even in this mosque. Is it different from what the Muslims are doing in America? No. Is it different from what the Muslims are doing in England? No. Is it different from what the Muslims are doing in Saudi Arabia? No. Is it di different from what the Muslims are doing in Canada? No. In Australia? No. In Ghana? No. In Togo? No. In Saudi Arabia? No. All over the world? No. The same prayer. Then listen to what the Bible says. Zafaniah chapter 3 verse 9. In the Bible. Zafaniah chapter 3 verse 9. He said, in the last generation, I will change the language of the people into a pure language. I will change the language of the people into a pure language. That they will all call the name of the Lord in that language and worship God shoulder to shoulder in the same language. Please, in America, in what language do, do the Muslims observe their salat? Arabic. Arabic. 
What about in England? What about in Ibunan? What about in Nigeria? What about in Ghana? What about in Togo? What about in Iran? What about in Iraq? What about in Syria? What about in Saudi Arabia? the language of the people into a pure language that they will all call the name of the Lord in that language and worship God shoulder to shoulder in the same language. This indicates that Islam is a universal religion of Allah. Allah. Because the Muslims have the same system of worship. So this indicates that this system of worship we are doing, this salad we are doing, is universally the same all over the world, symbolizing the universality of the religion of Islam. Second point, please. I want to ask us one question. Answer to the last. I want to ask us one question. In which month are we now? Ramadan. The Muslims throughout the world, all over the world, are we not observing fasting? Anywhere you go in the world, the Muslims are abiding by the rules and regulations of Allah, the observation of the month of Ramadan in the same month, the same period, annually. That proves what? The universality of Islam. The universality of Islam. You know, therefore, this indicates that Islam is a universal religion. Do you know that this, our Quran, is mentioned in the Bible? Any Bible, whether the King James Version, the Revised Standard Version, the Good News Bible, the Living Bible, the International Bible, the New American Bible, the Capo Christian Bible, the New English Bible, the Lost Book of the Bible and the Protestant Book of Eden, the New World Translation of the Scriptures used by the Jehovah Witnesses, the Gospel of Barnabas, any of the versions of the Bible, any of the versions of the Bible, the Jerusalem Bible, the Amplified Bible, and other versions of the Bible, when you open the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12, before I quote that Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12, let, us, let me take you back to the historical origin or revelation of the glorious Quran. We all learn from our own elementary schools in IRK, Islamic Studies, Religious Knowledge, that God Almighty revealed the Quran to Prophet Muhammad through the Holy Spirit called Angel Gabriel when Prophet Muhammad was in the cave of Hira, about 12 kilometers away from the city of Mecca. He was at the age of 40. Angel Gabriel appears unto him and said unto him, Ikra, go, Ikra, read. Prophet Muhammad says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ma ana I am not learned because he did not go to school. He was an illiterate prophet. He could neither read nor write. He said, Ma ana I am not learned. The angel squeezed him and said, Ikra, this man has become the Vikarak. Read in the name of your Lord who made creation. And let the Kanaka, Ikra, this man has become the Vikarak. Kanaka, the Insana, and Anak. I created man from a brook of congen brook. Ikra, our book of Akara. Read, and your Lord is the most born to you. And let the Allah of Belkanam, who taught man the use of the pen. Allah of Insana, and taught man that which he knew not. Which means that. The first revelation that came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was to command him to read. Ikra. Ikra, thank you. We all know this. Listen to what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12. And I quote. And the book is revealed unto him who cannot read, saying, Read! And he said, I am not learned. Allah! I am quoting the Bible, this prophecy is 700 years Let me quote it again, because that prophecy is very sweet. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12. And the book is revealed unto him who cannot read, saying, read, Ikra, and he said, I am not learned. We have three things here. We are told in Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12 in the Bible that a book you know, it's revealed unto him who cannot read. And that person was asked, read. And that person said, I am not learned. First, 
Let us ask the Christians this question. What is the name of that book? <laughs> Second, we ask them, who was that person who commanded him to read? Who was that person that said, read? And second, who was that person that said, I am not learning? Prophet Muhammad What is the name of the book? Who commanded him to read? And who said, I am not learning? The answer can only be found in Islam. I asked one Christian, he said, I know they be aware the thing they have <laughs> I don't know. So the answer is in Islam. And do you know what? In the Bible, Angel Gabriel was seen with the Quran in the Bible. Or the Quran. Do you know where Angel Gabriel was seen holding the Quran in the book of Revelation, chapter 14? Verses 6 to 7. Revelation is the last book of the New Testament. Revelation, the book of Revelation. Now, in that Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 7, when you open it, let me quote it. Then you will see whether it is the Quran or not. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 7. I am quoting the Bible now. John said, And I saw the angel of God hovering in the sky, meaning hovering in the air, in the sky, with an everlasting book that will be preached to the people that dwell on earth, to every nation, to every tribe, to every tongue, to every community, to every community, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is coming. I worship him that created the heavens. Worship him that created the earth. Worship him that created the mountains. Worship him that created the ocean. Let me come back again before I analyze the prophecy. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 7, the vision of John. John said, And I saw the angel of God hovering in the air, in the sky, having an everlasting scripture, an everlasting book, Meaning, the book that will remain in the world forever and ever. That is why it is called everlasting. Having an everlasting scripture, you know, that will be preached to the people that dwell on earth, to every nation, to every community, to every tribe, to every tongue, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is coming. And worship Him, who created the heavens, worship him, who created the air, worship him, who created the mountain, worship him, who created the ocean. Now, the first thing was, an angel was seen with, with an everlasting scripture, an eternal book. Who brought the book to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Angel Gabriel. It was Angel Gabriel. And that scripture is everlasting. Meaning, it will remain forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever till the end of the world. <laughs> then he said, that will be preached to the people that dwell on earth, to every nation, to every tribe, to every community. What is the meaning of this statement? Meaning, that universal book will be universal scripture. Will be preached to every tribe. Does the Bible or the Gospel of Jesus answer this? No. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 that I was sent only to the worship of the house of Israel. The message of Jesus was meant only for the Jews. And when Jesus was sending his 12 disciples, according to the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 to 6, he said, don't go to any person that is not a Jew. Go not unto the way of the Gentiles nor unto any house of the Samaritan, but go only to the worship of the house of Israel. This indicates that the gospel of Jesus was meant only for the Jews. And it was the gospel of Jesus that was even making this prophecy about the coming of an, an everlasting scripture. It was the Bible that was making this prophecy, the book of Revelation. You know, so it is only the Holy Quran that answered this. Why? Because, please, 
now the Quran that the Muslims use in Nigeria is it different from the Quran the Muslims use in America? No. Is it different from the Quran the Muslims use in China? No. Is it different from the Quran the Muslims use in Saudi Arabia? No. Is it different from the Quran the Muslims use in Ghana? No. The Quran is universally the same. And Allah has thrown a challenge. In Quran chapter 17 verse 88, Ola in this tamaa to the insa wal jinni ala ayya atu bi misli hadal qur'ana la ya atu na bi misli bi wa law kana ba'aduhum li ba'adin tabiyyin That's saying, if the assemblies of jinns and men we are to come together to help one another to produce a book like the Qur'an la ya atu na bi misli bi they can never produce such a book wa law kana ba'aduhum li ba'adin tabiyyin even if they will help one another that is what that is that means the Quran is the ultimate miracle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam meaning why is the Quran a miracle because the prophet that wrote this book could neither read nor write he was unlettered illiterate he could not read and he could not write and the Quran spoke about the past the present and the future the creation of the heaven, the creation of the earth, the creation of the angel, the creation of hellfire, the creation of paradise, the enjoyment in paradise, the enjoy the enjoyment in paradise, the punishment and suffering in the hellfire. You know the the history of the creation of human beings, the history of the creation of the jinns, the history of the prophets of God. You know right from Adam alayhi salam. You know the past, the destruction of the people of. You know, the past wicked people like Fir'aun, Pharaoh. Allah revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Pharaoh. Pharaoh was destroyed about 5,000 years before the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah revealed to Prophet Muhammad about the body of Fir'aun. For the yawman una jika bibadanika lita kula liman kalfaka ayatan Allah said today, I will save your lifeless body from this ocean, you fell out, so that you will become a sign and a wonder to those people that will come after you. <laughs> now go to Egypt. The body of Pharaoh is there. And it is only the Holy Quran that mentioned that the body of Pharaoh will be delivered from the sea. You see, Alhamdulillah. CNN show it show February in, from museum February this year this is a prophecy in the Quran Allah. Allah. Which is how did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam know this wa ma yatiku an al hawa in huwa illa wahyu yuha allama hu shadid al quwa he does not speak on his own authority it was a revelation from the Almighty Allah to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Muhammad Shadid Al-Quwa and he was taught by one mighty in power Zalika min ambai el gay This is an incident that took place in your absence Nuhi bi ilayka which we reveal unto you by inspiration You know? So anywhere you go in the world the Quran is one Every year, the Muslims from America, from China, from Tunisia, from France, from Ghana, from Nigeria, all over the world, they come and unite to compete, you know, reciting the Quran in Saudi Arabia or in Nigeria. The same Quran, the Bible. Is Bible one? No. There are different versions of the Bible with a lot of contradictions and discrepancies, addition and deletion. The Catholic Bible has 73 books. The Protestant Bible has 66 books. And the Jehovah Witness, on the 8th of September, 1957, the headquarters of the Jehovah Witnesses at the United States of America published a magazine entitled 50,000 Errors in the Bible. That they have discovered 50,000 Errors in the Bible. And this is the reason why one of the Western imperialists called Dr. Maurice Bouquet, a French Roman Catholic scientist, he was not a Muslim, but he brought the Bible and he brought the Quran. And he compared and contrasted the Quran and the Bible from the scientific point of view. Meaning, he experimented the Bible and he experimented the Quran and he came to his final conflict. 
conclusion. And he wrote his final conclusion in one of his books written entitled The Bible, the Quran, and Modern Science. In page 120 of that book, this is what he said. He said, Why monumental errors are to be found in the Bible? I could not find a single hero in the Quran. Allah. Why monumental errors are to be found in the Bible? I could not find a single hero in the Quran. I have to stop and ask myself, if a man was the author of the Quran, meaning if Muhammad was the author of the Quran, how would he have written facts which today are shown to be true with modern scientific discovery? And he later accepted the religion of Islam. After his experiment, he embraced the religion of Islam. Then there was another Western historical, historical researcher called Professor Noldek. Professor Noldek. In the, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, 9th edition, under Quran, he said, the effort of the Western imperialists to find a letter interpolation or mystic in the Quran has failed. Meaning, they could not discover any change in the Quran. And a lot of unbelievers, since from the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had made fruitless effort to change the Quran, to add or to reduce from the Quran, and they didn't succeed. Because Allah says, Inna nahanu nazzal na zikr wa inna lahu na hazir. Allah said, We, that is plural of respect, plural of majesty, used by the Almighty Allah, that is plural of power, because of the attributes of Allah, because of the angels, the ministers of Allah, because the mosquito is a soldier of Allah, is an army of Allah. If Allah wants the mosquito to destroy you, Allah can send that mosquito to go and destroy you. The bee, that is what do you call bee? A That thing that you call you. If Allah wants it to scatter the whole people in war, he will command the fire, go and chase them away. The snakes, they are the armies of Allah, the elephant. The water is also what? An army of Allah. Mm. A soldier of Allah. Allah can set the water to go and destroy. Mm. Fire is also an army of Allah. You get it? It's a minister of Allah. You know the elephant, animals, wild animals in the bush, like lion and other wild animals. If Allah wants, he will say, oh yeah, go and chase all these people. They are all the armies of Allah. The angels also are there as armies of Allah. No one knows the host of Allah except himself. So when Allah says we, it's a plural of power, plural of majesty, plural of honor. So Allah said, he was the one that sent down the Quran and he will protect the Quran. And is Allah not protecting the Quran? Allah is protecting the Quran. There was a somebody in the then Gongola, it's a Christian. He brought the Quran in the church, in the presence of the Christians. And do you know what? He said, I want to prove to you that this book is not the book of God. I want to prove to you that this book is fake. This book is not true. And he brought kerosene and matches in the presence of his Christians. And he said, Hallelujah! They said, Hallelujah! He put kerosene on top of the Quran. When he put kerosene, he took his matches. As he was about, and the Christians were shouting, Hallelujah! As he was about to release the matches, the fire just caught him and he burned to ashes and the Quran disappeared. It happens in Gongola. And most of the Christians in the churches reverted to Islam. They accepted Islam. No Muslim was there. Only Allah was looking at them. Wallahi, the Quran disappeared and he was born to ashes. In Sokoto, 
I witnessed that incident in Sokoto. A very big compound, burnt to ashes. Only the Holy Quran remained. Oh. Only the Holy Quran was picked. Remain without being affected. In Sokoto, we are in control. Then there was a certain incident that took place at Ibadan. At the theological, you know, garden in the University of Ibadan. A Christian called Abu Durin, Bishop Abu Durin or Pastor Abu Durin. Do you know what Pastor Abu Durin did? Pastor Abu Durin was preaching in his church. And he told the people that he was proved to them that he was going to prove to them that Jesus was really the Son of God. And he made an appointment with them on a particular Sunday. And he brought two luxurious buses. And they packed the congregation in the church. And they went to the University of Nevada at the Geological Garden. At the lion's den, where the lion was lying. Do you know what happened? Pastor Abaduri went with one big rope. Rope. And the Christians surrounded the lion's den and they were clapping their hands. They would say, Jesus Baba, Jesus Baba, Jesus Baba. They were shouting the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus and all that. And Pastor Abaduri just started climbing the wire and he entered into the lion's den with his rope tied on his body and a copy of the Bible. But when he entered, the lion was already sleeping. The lion was sleeping in the gardens. And Pastor Abu Durin started shouting, calling the name of Jesus. Lion, lion, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Lion, I challenge you, come here in the name of Jesus. The lion was sleeping. The lion was hearing the echo. <laughs> Am I dreaming? Is it a dream or a dream? Do you know what happened? The lion just opened its eyes and the lion saw a man standing, shouting the name. Yes, lion, come, come. As the lion opened its eyes, after some minutes, you know, the lion was looking at the, the, the no reaction. The lion was just, the pastor did not know that the lion wanted to confirm. <laughs> Do you know what? As the lion just woke up, the Christian shouted, he don't wake up. <laughs> they were shouting Jesus. And Abodur was bold enough to be shouting, Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, lion, come here, in the name of Jesus. He was holding the Bible. Come and prove to them that Jesus is the Son of God. Come. The lion was moving majestically. The lion didn't rush. As the lion was moving majestically, the, lion, the pastor was thinking that he has already conquered the lion. He said, yes, come. In the name of Jesus and the Christian, we are clapping. Come. He didn't know that the lion wanted to come to see whether he was inside or outside. <laughs> As the lion just approaching, the lion said, hey, got the open door where there is no door. <laughs> the lion just took him sound and bounced on him. Pastor, the, the, pastor, hey! the lion just touched here one night and squeezed him. The Bible fell on the one side and the rope fell on the other side and the whole Christian took to the air. Yes. <laughs> they rushed. And that was where he died. I am telling you, this thing happened in Ibadan, theological garden. Koro Koro eyes, it happens. They publish it, all the papers carry it, television carry that. It happened around 1991. That time I was in Sudan. When I saw it, they, 
globalize it. And the title of that paper, Pasture Eaten by Lion. Because the man said he wanted the lion to prove to them that Jesus is is, is son of God. The lion said, no, 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 you the tongue. Oh, God, no, yes, no. <laughs> and look, look, there are a lot of miracles that prove the authenticity, authenticity of Islam. Uh, at Babbage, that time I was in Lagos. What happened was that a slave was discovered with the name of Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Slave from the sea. Then there was an animal also that had risen that was discovered with also the name of Allah. Ra and Nahu. Here, Muhammad Rasulullah. You get it? Trees in Germany, Armenia. A tree germinated beneath. You know, just sprout up. And designed artistically the name of Allah and his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even in the rocks, in Prati, a rock was discovered with the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say Muhammad or Rasulullah. In the rock, in Jos, a lot of things, even in the body of the fish. And so many other things that we have, have been discovered. You know? This in the, this you know signifies what signifies the authenticity authenticity of Islam. Finally, there is one important verses I want to quote from the glorious Quran. This incident is going to happen on the day of judgment. The Christians will be there. The Muslims will be there. Everybody will be there. Quran chapter 5, verse 116 to 118. Allah will question Jesus. Allah will ask Jesus a question in the presence of the Christians who call him God. Allah will ask Jesus this question. Where is God Allah who are Jesus the Mariam? Allah will say, Jesus the son of Mary. Are you the one that told your people that they should take you and your mother as two gods instead of the Almighty God? Are you the one that say that you are God? And Jesus will say, Allah subhanaka, glory be unto you, O Allah. All purity belongs to you. Jesus will shiva. He will shiva. All glory belongs to you, O Allah. It is not for me to say that which I have no right. In to go to who? If I say that I am God, forget I let them go, O Allah. You know it. The Allah will not finish because you know what is in my mind. And the Christians will be hearing it from the mouth of Jesus. If I say that I am God, O Allah, you know it. The Allah will not finish because you know what is in my mind. When I Allah will not finish it, then I know not what is concerned in you, O Allah. In that Anta Allah will do you, for you have the knowledge of everything that is hidden. Ma kul tu lahum illa ma amartani bihi. I did not say anything unto them except what you have commanded me to say, O Allah. Ani abdullaha arabi wa rabbu. That is worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Wa kul tu alayhim shahidan ma dum tu fihim. I was a witness over them when I dwelt among them. Follow Mark about fight and you put the anchor and keep it When you recall me, O Allah, you are the watcher over them. Into a zip room. If you put it, want Allah put the shaykh in shahida. Thou art a witness over all things. Into a zip room. If you punish them, O Allah, fa inna hum ibaduka. They are your servant. Wa inta kafir lahum. And if you forgive them, fa inna ka anta al-aziz al-hakim. You are the exalted in power and the wise. Then Allah will reply back to Jesus. Allah will say, that this is the day in which the truthful ones, you know, will be delivered, will be benefited by their untruthfulness. If you didn't come here with the truth, you will not be saved. You know? 
Lord, do not to the demon that they have unheard. They will have the garden of eternity, paradise, under which we were thrown. They will live inside that paradise forever and ever 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 that he didn't ask them to worship him. He didn't tell them that he is God. Do you know what will happen? They will start crying, weeping, screaming, screaming. And they will come to Jesus. And they will say to Jesus, this is mentioned in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. They will say to Jesus, Master, we prophesy in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform miracles in your name. Are the Christians not performing miracles in the name of Jesus? Yes. Are they not saying that they are casting demons in the name of Jesus? Yes. Are they not saying that they are prophesying in the name of Jesus? Yes. See, on that day, Jesus said, on that day, they will come to me and say, Lord, 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 we prophesy in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform miracles in your name. And today you are saying that you don't know us, then Jesus will say, and I will confess and say unto them, get away, get away, get away. I don't know you, men of iniquity, get away from here. This is mentioned in the Bible, meaning on the day of judgment, Jesus will disown them. Jesus will disown them. He will reject them because they, they, they try to implicate him. Calling him God, calling him the son of God, worshiping him, using his, his name to do as they are doing today. I saw some people saying they are performing miracles in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, they are in the name of Jesus. This is deception. Big deception. Because in Matthew chapter 24, verse 23 to 24, Jesus said, there arise fake Christ and fake prophet that will come in my name. They will perform miracles in my name. In so way that if it is possible, they will deceive the very elect. What these people used to do is to go and make a covenant. You know a covenant, an agreement, a compact. They will establish a compact, an agreement with the demons, James, black James, to be working for them. I hope you understand. And they will come and be using these demons against the people. They will send these demons to you. And they will come to you and say that they want to, you have a demon, they want to cast that demon away from you. That is what they are doing in their various churches today. That is what they are doing. And they say they use the name of Jesus to cast out these demons. Oh yeah. They are something that Jesus said in the Bible. If any Christian claim that he can perform miracles, let him come to us, the Muslim, let us test him. Let us test him. We now we go test him. Maybe he will come with his head. Go, go prepare the exam for himself. You go prepare the exam for yourself and you go come say you don't pass the exam. No! Come, we try you. We will take you first. We will take you to cemetery. Yes. Or we take you to psychiatric hospital. Yes. Or we take you to where the lepers are. <laughs> or we bring in them somebody that is working like this. Saliva <laughs> <laughs> I want you to help this man in Jesus' name. <laughs> they are the same people. Accumulating money. All in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, this is what Jesus said. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will say to this mountain, move away from here and it will move. Now, if the Christians say that they are the true believers in Jesus, this statement is in their Bible, not in our Quran. 
is in their Bible, Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. Then we will take them to Mount Kilimanjaro, or a certain mountain, anywhere in the bush. So I have believed. Jesus said, if you believe in him, you will command this mountain to move from here. Why? Why? He said, ah, but you also, you Muslim, you said you believe in Jesus. I said, if to say this statement is in our Quran, we will do that. It's in your Bible, not in the Quran. <laughs> Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. You see? And Jesus said, you know, I debated with one Christian at Ajedi. One Christian from Calabar. He's from Calabar. I will never forget that. Other, other, other open debate I had with him at Agege area. What happened between me and him? He was claiming that they, they can perform miracles. I say, you, can you perform miracles? He said, oh, I can perform miracles. I said, okay, what is that Bible you are holding? What kind of Bible are you holding? He said, King James Version. I said, can you kindly open the book of Mark chapter 16, verses 17 to 18? He opened it. Where Jesus said that these signs, miracles, and wonders shall follow them that believe in me. In my name, they will carry snake, python, in my name, and it will not bite them. In my name, they will drink poison, and it will not harm them. And they will cure many sicknesses in my name. I say now, out of this test, I want to give you one. Are you ready? He say yes. Many Christians we are standing, many Muslims say yes, I am ready. I say, are you ready? He say yes. I just open my bag. And I put a bottle with water inside. <laughs> Ordinary water inside that bottle. I say, do you see this bottle? I say, look, oh, but I want you to sign an agreement that if you die now, you person not with me. You take the vampire right. <laughs> now he started thinking, trying to change his mind. I say, Abi, you want me to write that agreement for you? <laughs> I gave him my room. I say, oh, yeah, right. hand, I He said, I'm waiting there inside the bottle. <laughs> I say, the content of this bottle is hot, content, hot concentrated acid and the poison of fraud. Hot concentrated tetrapolitan versus acid, chemical. Hey, you, you come with the intention of killing me. <laughs> he says, so now if I say I will drink this one, you will give it to me. I say, ah, no, no, not me, I, you read for your Bible. <laughs> and people started laughing. You see, you see yourself. You see? Therefore, now what happened? What is happening now to them? People are using what? They will go to India. They will make an argument with the magician and they will come and start deceiving their own people. And some people will will will, will bury cow, cow, live cow. They will if they are building church, they will dig a very big hole. It happens in Abuja. If they happen, they will bring a very big cow big fat cow and they will bury that cow alive where they want to build that church where the pastor is going to stand and when the when the when the cow die it will rot it and you know maggot naturally maggot will appear oh, the number of maggot that will appear that will be number of the population of the church people will be moving to that church that is what they used to do and some will even bury the woman head so many things and let me tell you one thing, please. This Salat al Jumu'ah, Friday prayer we used to observe. Is this mentioned in the Quran or not? It's mentioned. Surah al Jumu'ah. Ya yu Allah dina amanu. Ida nudi al Salat min yom al Jumu'ah. Fas aw ila dikir al Nah. What are the signs? Zara kum kairu na kum yom kum taala mu. Now we the Muslims, we are told to go to mosque on Friday as the Christians. Is there any verse in the Bible where the Christians are commanded to go to church on Sunday? But now you know this for Bible. It's unbelievable. I was in Calabar at the Minitiata Cultural Center Board. 
one of the lecturers at the University of Ibadan, of Canada, was there. During question time, they came alive on at Canada in Bububri, Bububri School. You know, he came and received the microphone. He said, I have a question. I say, ask your question. He said, in your lecture, you say that there is no verse in the Bible where we, the Christians, are commanded to go to, to church on Sunday. I say, yes. He said, okay, you Muslims, you used to go to mosque on Friday. Is that not? I say, yes. Can you show me a verse in the Quran where you are told to go to mosque on Friday? I say, yes. I open the Quran and I rest. Then, one Christian came and received the microphone. He said, thank you, preacher. Before I know the gold church war and my friends in Christian, they, they worry me. Now I don't get the reason that I go ask them why I show me for my <laughs>